Hello, my name is Martin Helliesen and I work as a researcher in the group of Professor Krabs at DGU Energy in Roskilde, Denmark, where the main focus is polymer solar cells and their industrialization. My talk today will first of all concentrate on the materials development of conjugated polymers for large-scale roll-to-roll processing of polymer solar cells. This indicates that the polymer synthesis has to be uh, very straightforward with the low synthetic complexity so that we can keep the cost down of the material. I will also introduce you to uh, flow chemistry and show you how we can use this method to scale up our high performing materials to a scale that is uh, comparable to the consumption of material on our large scale rotor roll equipment. We need around uh, 1 to 10 grams of material to prepare an entire set of large area modules, whereas we need 10 to 100 grams initially when we have to optimize the roll to roll processing conditions. Therefore, the upscaling of materials is an important focus area in our group. The characteristics of polymer solar cells is that they have a thin outline. Uh, they can be printed on flexible plastic substrate and they're lightweight. They distinguish themselves from the existing solar cell technologies by enabling scalable fast roll-to-roll -roll coding and printing production, which can realize a potentially very low production cost. Though in order to uh, realize this potential of the polymer solar cell, we need to be able to unify three important factors, which is stability, process, and efficiency. For example, a material that gives rise to a highly efficient device is of little consequence if its uh, operation is unstable or if the process leading to the device is too complicated. In terms of efficiency, um, over 10% has been reported for small-scale lab devices, but unfortunately these are based on highly engineered materials that are almost impossible to scale up. For large-scale uh, modules uh, reported so far, the efficiency lies around 3 to 4 percent, and they can be stable for several years under outdoor condition using simple encapsulation techniques. In terms of processing, um, roll-to-roll -roll printing and coding is, to, is believed to be a requirement for a successful roll-to-roll -roll production of polymer solar cells at a sufficiently low cost in order for the sol polymer solar cell to be competitive with other solar cell technologies. For a fast and simple roll-to-roll -roll process, we fabricate all the layers from solution in air without any vacuum steps. Flexibility is needed in the process, but it might not be needed in the final product. But it is an interesting feature when you're designing new applications based on polymer solar cells. In the picture you see our inline roll-to-roll -roll machinery. It includes two ovens for annealing and drying, uh, two different printing systems and a slot die coder. It can fit in a small laboratory and is intended for our large-scale roll-to-roll production of polymer solar cells. For the smaller scale, for example, when we are testing new materials, we use a small roll coating machine that has been constructed to mimic the coating performed on the full-scale roll-to-roll processing equipment. Compared to the traditional uh, processing method spin coating, uh, this the roll coating machine uh, makes the transition from lab to production a lot faster and easier because we use the same processing methods on the small scale equipment here as on the large scale roll to roll equipment. It can fit in an ordinary fume cupboard and in terms of material usage we spend less than one milliliter of ink per run on one meter of substrate. Now when we are developing new active layer materials for large scale processing, one of the main points is that they have to work in thick active layers and preferably they should give a stable high performance with little variation in a wide range of active layer thicknesses. This indicates that the material has to have a very high charge mobility so that we can extract all the generated charges in the active layer. 
The reason for these thick layers in large-scale processing is that we get a much higher device yield because we lower the chance of pinholes and defects in the film. Secondly, a very thin layer would restrict the choice of printing and coating techniques in the rotor roll manufacture. Another important thing is that the polymer synthesis has to be scalable with low synthetic complexity. And this indicates few synthetic steps, easy purification and easy workup, and a high total yield so that we easy and fast can prepare a, a large quantity of material. Now, until now, all large-scale polymer solar cell fabrications almost only rely on the classic material P3HG and PCBM. And one of the reasons to this is that uh, P3HG is one of the few polymers for organic solar cells that is commercially available in the kilo scale. It has a straightforward synthesis with few steps and it's, it, it's easy to scale up. Secondly, the P3HT PCBM system, it, uh, it's compatible with the rough conditions associated with roll-to-roll -roll processing, which consists of solution processing, ambient, atmosphere, and elevated temperatures in several drying cycles. Thirdly, the P3HT PCBM system, it can give stable high performance in a wide range of actual layer thicknesses, ranging from 100 and all the way up to 600 nanometers. Average power conversion efficiency lies around 1.5 to 2 percent, which has been reported so far for roll-to-roll -roll coded large area modules based on p 3 g PCBM. Now it's generally accepted that this system can give efficiencies around 4 to 5 percent under optimized conditions and on a small scale. So the large scale modules based on p 3 g PCBM has probably reached the limit by now. In my group, we have uh, focused a lot on uh, polymer systems based on the thiosol thiosol unit <coughs> because it ensures a rigid coplanar backbone which favors high charge mobility. Um, PDTS TTZ4 here has these two fused rings for enhanced coplanarity. It is based on a thiosolothiosol unit and a dithyenosilolo unit. It has a very high charge mobility and compared to p 3 hd it has a reduced band gap um, so that it potentially can harvest a larger part of the available sunlight. Um, for good solubility, um, besides hexyl chains on the thiophene units, we have also incorporated bulky ethyl hexyl chains on a thiethyeno salolo unit. Initial small-scale tests of the polymer PDTS TTZ4 was performed on our mini roll coder, and as I mentioned, it, it's directly scalable to the large-scale roll-to-roll -roll process because we use the same processing methods on the small scale as we do on the large scale. The geometry uh, can be seen uh, in the top right corner here. First we have a PET substrate, and then we have a front electrode consisting of a low conductive P dot PSS layer and a silver grid. Then we have a slot decoded electron transporting layer, zinc oxide. Then we have a slot decoded active layer, which is also shown in figure A. On top of that we have a slot decoded P dot PSS layer, and finally the device is finished by flexographic printing of a silver back electrode as shown in figure B and C. The polymer here, it offers uh, very good solubility, so slot decoding is unproblematic and easy to control. And so consequently, we can get a very high device yield, close to 100%. Now to investigate the active layer thickness uh, influence on the solar cell performance, we changed the roll speed from <coughs> 0.4 to 1 meter per minute. And then we ended up with active layer thicknesses ranging from 200 to 550 nanometers. Now the majority of state-of-the-art materials for polymer solar cells, they suffer from a drop in the fill factor along with enhanced active layer thicknesses. 
Um, and this is mostly due to poor charge mobility or poor morphology. In contrast to the PDTS TTZ4 polymer, it can maintain a high fill factor from 200 to 420 nanometers. After that, it starts to drop uh, slowly. The current it enhances up to 420 nanometers, which is uh, the optimal active layer thickness. With this active layer thickness, uh, the average performance lies around 2.8%. After optimization of the solvent combination, the champion devices can give efficiencies up to 3.5%. So together with a good process control and a high device yield, this designates the PDTS TZ4 polymer as a high performance alternative to P3HG PCBM. Now, we're always trying to enhance the performance of our materials. And in an attempt to uh, uh, lower the, the, or tune the energy levels of the PDTS TDG4 polymer, in order to reach higher open circuit voltage in solar cells, we prepared a new polymer called PBDT TDZ4. It is still based on a dithionothiosolothiosol unit, but the dithionothiosolol unit has been substituted with a benzodiathiophene unit. The new polymer it uh, shows severe aggregation in solution. Uh, so to reach a decent solubility, we have to incorporate bulky hexyl desyl change on the BDT unit instead of the ethyl hexyl units. Indeed, it has a deeper homo energy level compared to the DTS polymer. And solar cells based on this new polymer, they give open circuit voltage around 0.8 volt, which is around 0.1 volt higher compared to the DTS polymer. Another important advantage with this new polymer system is that it has a more straightforward synthesis with lower synthetic complexity. This can be seen when you compare the synthesis of the two monomers, BDT and DTS. The standard BDT unit only requ requires five steps to prepare from bromothiophene, whereas it requires eight steps also from bromothiophene to prepare the standard DTS unit. So it has a, a, a much higher synthetic complexity compared to the BDT unit. And consequently, this new polymer is definitely more suitable for upscaling. Initial small-scale tests of this new polymer was also performed on our mini roll coder. And in this work, we, uh, we prepared uh, modules with an active area of 8 square centimeter and compared them to single cells in order to investigate the scalability of the process. The geometry can be seen in the left top corner. Again, we have a PET substrate with a silver grid and a P-dot PSS layer as front electrode. Then we have a zinc oxide electron transporting layer, a slot decoded active layer as shown in figure A, a slot decoded P-dot PSS layer, and finally the device is finished by flexographic printing of the silver back electrode. And this is shown in figure B and C. And in the same printing process, the four stripes here are serially connected. The modules give an average performance around 2.9%, which is very comparable to the single devices, which give an average efficiency of 3.0%. The voltage and current of the module match more or less the current and voltage of the single device. It's only the fill factor that shows a small drop. But this is expectable when you're scaling up a process. Overall, due to a reliable and consistent process, this work shows that it is possible to scale up from single cells uh, to modules without having an efficiency drop. Now to transfer this new polymer to uh, large-scale roll-to-roll processing, we need large quantities of the material. Um, we need at least 10 grams initially when we have to optimize the roll-to-roll -roll processing conditions. 
So initially we tried to scale up the polymer using conventional batch synthesis, but this generally resulted in poorly soluble polymers. And it did not help to lower the reaction time or the temperature. It quickly became clear that we couldn't just copy the, the reaction conditions from our small scale to the large scale due to mass and heat transfer issues. When you're scaling up a batch synthesis, a lot of uh, different parameters, they can change dramatically in terms of mixing, heating and equipment. So normally you have to optimize the reaction conditions on the large scale, which is time consuming and requires a lot of material. Instead, we tried to explore the continuous flow reaction, which is illustrated here in the left corner. Um, you have a tube with an internal specified volume. It goes through a reactor where you can control the temperature, and this is where the reaction takes place. And uh, normally at the end of the tube, you have a back pressure regulator, the BPR here so that you can run your reactions at high pressure. And this means that you can run your reactions at temperatures higher than the boiling point of your solvent. The procedure is simple. You pump in your reaction solution from the left. It goes into the reactor where the reaction takes place. And then you can collect the final product when it comes out to the right. The reaction time is controlled easily with the flow speed. Now this method, it offers high reaction reproducibility, which is something we want for our polymerizations. We want the same polymer quality in every batch so that we can avoid changes in the film forming ability and in the solar cell performance. The method also offers safe handling of the reactive intermediates because you have a closed system inside the reactor. Another important thing is that you easily can optimize the reaction conditions in a fast and continuous way by changing the flow speed and the reactor temperature. Also because you have exactly the same reaction conditions inside the tube at all time in terms of mixing, heating and volume, uh, upscaling is very straightforward. You just copy the reaction conditions from the small scale to the large scale. Optimization of the flow synthesis of PBDT TDZ4 was initially performed on a 300 milligram scale. <coughs> the polymer is made with a stiller copolymerization between a stenylated BDT unit and a brominated TDC4 unit. The monomers can maximally have a concentration of 25 millimolars in the reaction solution without precipitation, which is highly important. The polymerization proceeds best with a palladium loading of 3 mole percent and together with a reactor temperature of 180 degrees and a reaction time around 30 minutes we can reach high molecular weights around 16 to 18,000 mm. Now from a qualitative uh, observation this molecular weight range seems to be the optimal for solution processing of polymer solar cells. In this range, uh, the polymer has a high molecular weight, but still keeps a decent, good solubility. We then tried to scale up the flow synthesis to a one and a half gram scale and up to a five gram scale, which is shown in the table here in entry four and five. In both experiments, we kept the same reaction parameters as on the small scale, which is entry three here in the table. And you can see that the afforded polymer has a high molecular weight that is very comparable to the molecular weight of the polymer in the small scale experiment. Now this molecular weight consistency, it, uh, it uh, indicates that the upscaling of this polymer PBDT TTZ4 using flow synthesis is very straightforward and it encouraged us to uh, increase the synthesis scale even further. So we then did the two 10 gram scale experiment in entries six and seven. In the first 
10 gram experiments and 26 here. We kept the same reaction parameters as on the smaller scales, but uh, we lowered the reaction time from 30 to 20 minutes. The afforded polymer had an estimated uh, molecular weight of 16,000 mn, which is within the warranted molecular weight regime. In the second uh, 10 gram experiment, entry 7, we lowered the reaction time even further to 10 minutes to see if it was possible. And at the same time, we increased the temperature to 200 degrees to compensate for the lower reaction time. Again, we saw an estimated molecular weight of 16,000 mn, though the PDI value had increased a bit. So overall, we could prepare 10 grams of the polymer PBDT TGZ4 using flow synthesis. And uh, it was where we did it within two hours, which is comparable to a production rate up to 120 grams per day when we used a reactor volume of 37 milliliters. This effective uh, production rate, it indicates the scalability of the flow synthesis, where even higher production rates, which is required for industrial applications, is readily achievable with an enhanced reactor volume. You can then increase the flow speed and pump larger quantities through your system per day. To validate the polymer's quality, we made the uh, roll-coded small-scale polymer solar cells um, using the flow synthesized uh, batches. And you can see the average performance here in the table. It is very consistent, around 3.5% for all the flow synthesized batches. And this, this uh, consistency, it uh, indicates that the polymer's quality is very stable throughout all the flow synthesized batches on the different scales. Compared to uh, solar cell data for conventional batch synthesized uh, uh, polymers, which is seen in entry one and two here, the performance of the flow synthesized batches is around 17% higher, which we ascribe to better quality processing. Actually, due to very low solubility of the batch synthesized uh, uh, polymers, um, solution processing was pretty complicated due to precipitation and gel formation. And it actually was only possible to fabricate solar cells based on the small scale batch synthesized polymer in entry one. As a final point to this upscaling work, <coughs> We applied the flow synthesized PBDT TZ4 in large scale roll to roll processed polymer solar cells. Um, now, when we have uh, large quantities of high quality polymer material available, it is possible to optimize the roll to roll processing conditions thoroughly. In this work, we fabricated 1,300 flexible modules in a fully encapsulated form using only roll-to-roll -roll coding and printing methods. The modules, they consist of uh, 16 individual stripes that are serially connected in the printing process. The modules gives an average PG around 3.3%, whereas the champion modules show efficiencies up to 3.8%. So compared to modules prepared in the same manner, but based on PQST PCBM as the active layer, this PCE of 3.3% is over a factor 2 better. So this definitely uh, makes PBDT TTZ4 to a high performance alternative to uh, PQST PCBM in large scale roll to roll processed polymer solar cells. Finally, to summarize my talk, large-scale polymer solar cell fabrications reported so far, they almost only rely on the classic material PHT and PCBM. And one of the reasons to this is that PHT is one of a few polymers for organic solar cells that is commercially available in the kilo scale. Secondly, the PHT PCBM system can endure the rough conditions associated with roll-to-roll -roll processing. Therefore, in order for us to push the performance 
further towards 10% for large scale polymer solar cells. We need to develop new materials that are readily scalable and compatible with road to road processing. One method um, that is promising for the upscaling of uh, conjugated polymers is called continuous flow synthesis. It offers controlled polymerization, high reaction reproducibility, and straightforward upscaling. In my group, we have uh, demonstrated a production rate up to 120 grams per day of a high quality polymer material that is compatible with road to road processing of large scale polymer solar cells. Then I just need to say thank you for your attention.